Hi, I'm Maggie. Hi, I'm Grace, and this is A Very Bookish Podcast. Hey guys, welcome back to A Very Bookish Podcast. Today's episode at 38, and we're just going to be doing some life updates, reading updates. Um, a lot has changed in the last week for me, especially. You can definitely, for our YouTube listeners, see that I am in a completely different location. Um, I have a new bookshelf behind me. I have my TBR cart. I am sitting on the floor of my apartment. I have boxes stacked up so that my computer (laughs) sits up higher than me and I'm like actually slouching down (laughs) so that the mic so that the camera looks down to me. But welcome back to a very good podcast. We're going to just be updating y'all today. Um, Yeah. Wise, probably going to be a short one, honestly. It will probably be a short one. <laughs> like Grace uh, and I always saying that, and we're like, yeah, this one's actually going to be a short one. <laughs> no, this one actually will be. Um, it's kind of funny. Um, this month, I think, has been my least busiest month. But you've been reading that Maggie and I have known each other. Yeah. Yeah, I think this has been the month where I'm literally doing nothing but reading. But reading. You've been reading a lot. I have. I've been reading very, very fast. Like, but you're also, okay, no offense, but you are listening to audiobooks too. So that definitely helps because I am, yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm doing both. I am listening to audiobooks. I am reading some. Some of the books that I have been reading are not audiobooks. So it's been an adjustment because like for a while there I was listening to um a lot of audiobooks with my books like that's mostly what I was doing Mm -hmm. and then I started reading more adult romances which unfortunately don't have a lot of audiobooks available so I had to kind of teach myself how to read again without yeah. someone reading to me and that was like the most bizarre experience for me <laughs> okay like it's also definitely weird when like you're reading you read an audiobook and then like the next book in the series does not have an audiobook but then like the third book in the series has an audiobook because that's what because i'm reading the bromance book club series by Lindsay k adams right now i'm actually gonna pull it out um so i'm reading the uh, bromance book club series and i read the first one in an audiobook i finished it in a day it was so fast the third the second one undercover bromance it took me like four days to read because yeah. it's a fast-paced book but with the audiobook it's like a perfectly like day read and stuff and i just didn't have the time to like sit down and read it i really needed to listen to the audiobook no audiobook with my library it's probably does have an audiobook because the third one has an audiobook and the fourth one just came out but the covers are also like really really cute this i just finished this one yesterday but like the covers are so cute um it's berkeley and who does remind them. me remind me what it is again it's like a, a, a male book club. so it's a men's book club and they read they read books to understand women and in when what women expect when it comes to romance and just to kind of help their own love lives and in the first one gavin he he ends up joining the book club because his wife has been faking an orgasm for the last three years that they've like the whole time they've been married and she's been faking orgasms and she finally had one and he was like what was that like he didn't know what that was and he realized and he got angry because she was lying to him for like three years and then (laughs) and it was you have to you have to. it's so cute these are like these are the books that like genuinely make me laugh like i'll be sitting there reading i'm like (laughs) i'm like hold on hold on this is actually really funny but like also the guys are very intuitive in the books and they're like like the second book is mac and he is very he, he understands like women's issues and like 
the societal norms of like men making fun of women and that's why women are never taken seriously is because women are always like the things that I do they do are always made fun of and he like talks about that and he like calls other people out and he even calls women out for doing that and it was really good and I really liked the books (laughs) (laughs) I think it's a really cute uh, storyline it's definitely only a woman would concoct this story it, the no, dream it definitely it the would, dream it definitely is that a woman no man would ever think to write this kind of book no man would ever think to like start a book club about like there might be romance book clubs for men we i've never seen one before so i'm not going to say that there isn't one if you but if you know of one please let us know we would like to speak to these men yes and, and know what kind of books they they read well like i know men who read smutty romance oh yeah that's, Rod, that's roddy reads on tiktok he reads mm-hmm. um he reads smutty romances and stuff um but but this is specifically for how to treat women like come on come on yeah. and like like really quickly on like that first book lying <laughs> to yeah. keep that up for three years can you yeah. imagine that and like, keeping that up for three years you, I... you understand his heart like you but you also understand both sides where it's like she felt like she had to fake a lot of things in the relationship and stuff and you kind of learn about it and stuff and because he's a baseball player so he's a pro athlete baseball player and they, it's in nashville tennessee and so she's a single she's basically a single mom most of the time because he's away and they yeah. have two daughters and like so you kind of like and what i like about these books is that you see both sides of the stories so you understand both sides and you and it's not that one person is wrong and one person is right it's like they're both wrong because they just don't communicate or it's like they both have issues and you see them both like talk to each other and work those issues out which i think is so important that like it's not just like that one person really messes up it's that like they're both kind of fucked up too so they Mm -hmm. both so it's not like an imbalance when it comes to like oh like there is the groveling trope this the first book is the groveling trope hardcore grovel because the whole book is him trying to win his wife back because like, like it's 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 a thing of like you know communication is like a big thing in developing relationships yeah. right you want to have open communication with your partner that's how you move forward that's how you guys learn how to love each other that's how you learn how to become better partners and i i i definitely frown on that kind of idea this is me not reading the book I'm going to read the book. Of this is my my pre thoughts. I will download this. it for ebook if you want to read it because you can listen. I'm to almost like I'm I'm probably going to read it. Um and like I, like this is how do I say this? Um, if you're gonna lie to a, a, a person who you're being intimate with, and you're gonna be like, oh yeah, you know, I got there too, you know, yeah rocket launched blah 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 right you're gonna lie about that that light can only take you so far and like Like, three years that's excessive the fact that he found out when she did have one after they like after and he's just like and like I understand like you just have to read it you have to read it it's I will I I will download the ebook I will I will let me let me pull up my library real quick and I'm gonna download the the ebook for you to listen to it's just the thing of like um how (laughs) my girl you you've been withholding yourself because like look if you really want to get there intimately with your partner you gotta talk with them about what you want what you like what 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 feels better a little more to the right a little more to the left a little faster you know you know using directions that's why one of my favorite things in books and spicy books specifically is communication communication has to be there even if it's spicy talk but like you know you gotta be you have to if you want to have a fulfilling 
relationship experience and it's also like the fact that it was it does feel kind of icky but like the women also like aren't all like the men aren't like that's the reason he's in the book club is to learn about romance and stuff and like to be there and to be present in his family Mm -hmm. and like you see like the women also it's like they're not perfect either like they're human Mm -hmm. everybody is human everybody has their problems that they need to work through and you kind of see like the reason why he needs to go to the book club is because he's been he doesn't face his problems head on Mm -hmm. and he kind of pushes them aside and stuff and that's one of the main themes in the book sorry i'm Mm -hmm. getting the isbn to get this because i am downloading (laughs) this book for you right now um but it's Um, so because it's it's a thing but it's like it's a realistic thing it's a realistic thing that a lot of people go through a lot of people don't understand that you know these cutesy romances and contemporary romances yeah they're you know they're fiction and like you know realistically is it going to happen 100 percent? no but the underlying themes are things that people actually go through whether they be extreme or not but like there are actual things that these couples have to deal with and I feel like that's when like a contemporary book really will like resound with the reader like resonate with the reader because like it's it's something so simple and yet a whole story developed around it so I downloaded the audiobook for you and then I'm going to (laughs) download the e-copy for you uh, because they're both available on my library website but um yeah and so I bought this book. I bought the book on like a bad day where I was just like, I need to buy books. And I was like, I'm not having it at work. And so I bought like three books. It was like, I posted a TikTok about it. And um, and then I saw Janessa, she posted a video about it. And I was like, well, fuck. I like, t- I, t- I DM'd her. I was like, dude, now I have to fucking read this. And she's like, yes, you do. And I was like updating her as I was reading it. And I did like my reading vlog for it. And then I finished it and I was like, dude, I have to start the next one right now. And she's like, I know, but like, I have to read like this other book. And I'm like, dude, I'm starting it right now. She's like, fine, I will start it too. And I'm like, "Mm, my influence on people, it's great. But um, yeah, so, and also the like covers are so cute too. Yeah, they are. I like those type of covers too. Like it's not like too toony, but it is still cartoony style. I like it. It's not yeah. flat. It's but it also really like not. even the um <laughs> even the uh even the letterings are it's like bubble lettering where it's like not flat. Well so it's it, that uh the bromance is a baseball font. Yeah. Cause the on the first one, one, on the first one. Yeah, their each one are is- different um yeah it's each font has to kind of do neon with, um, sign kind of because he owns nightclubs yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah that's very cute um i i was planning on buying the whole series oh. especially just because of the co- cover i am broke right now and i yeah. don't have a job so yeah we'll see when that happens oh. um so for all of our youtube listeners if you look at my screen, you can see all of the books I bought this weekend. Um, That's a lot. It's like the whole cart. It's the whole damn book cart. <laughs> um. So here's the backstory. Okay, I I knew I was gonna do like a huge Barnes Noble haul when I left, and so I was like, okay, I'm gonna just save up money and stuff so I was I was ready to drop like 300 400 bucks on this haul right so I like met some like in some customers and we made we became friends and stuff and so we had like our little like book club where I'd tell them what books to buy and they'd like look at my TikTok and they're like okay should I buy this I'm like yes or like no I don't think you'd like that and so I was like okay girls we're going on a giant haul and so you see my I posted a video about it and this is five hundred dollars worth of product right here and I paid two fifty. I basically got fifty percent off mm. because I had my Barnes and Noble employee discount for forty dollar forty percent, and then my my coworker Michael he gave me a fifty dollar gift card, and I was like, dude, and he's like, Maggie, I didn't know I didn't know what book to get you, so <laughs> I just gave you a fifty dollar gift card. I was like, Michael, you know you could have bought these books for me right here, right? And he's like, 
didn't think about that and i was like thank you for the gift card <laughs> but it was it was cute but yeah so i that's my update is i no longer am working at barnes and noble i am back to school that's why I'll, i'm gonna do like i'm still like building you can see i only have one bookshelf that's not enough for me I have to wait until the other bookshelves get into Ikea before I do like my official room tour decoration video on YouTube, on my booktube account. So that's going to be for a while. Um, what else? But yeah, I'm actually slowing down my reading. Um, so my next read is actually, so I'm going to finish up This Heart by Jenna Scott. Um, I am 50% of the way through. So I'm going to finish this and then I'll put my review for the first two books out. And then my next book that I'm going to read, because I go to Catholic school. Don't tell me. <laughs> mm -mm. <laughs> Grace is like, not in my Christian household. Not in my Christian household. <laughs> nope. See, look. Look, with Priest. For our listeners, that's the book that she held up. She held up Priest. Um, and I am curious about it. I am <laughs> fucking <shit. laughs> you, Audio listeners, I held up another book and it's called Hot Under His Collar. And it's another, um, yeah. <laughs> the Jesuits should be proud. I'm getting into religion, but it might get into me too. <laughs> Grace. Grace is like, dear look, Lord. Look. <laughs> look. Uh, I, I was curious about Grace. Um, mm -hmm. Curious, like, you know, it piqued my interest, but like, I don't know. Something is just that's a, that's a hard limit for me I think um I was talking with Rose about it a little while ago mm -hmm. and she's like oh I just finished it it pulled me out of a reading slump I'm like oh okay that's good and I told her I don't know how I, I I've been thinking about it but I mm -hmm. I don't know if I want to put myself there and and, and then she she basically like it was just like oh well like trying to convince me and she's just mm -hmm. like look it, yes it does have that and I told her well I am religious and you know and my my family is this and da da da, da and kind of gave her a little bit of my backstory with that and she was like it piqued her interest even more to try to convince me to read this book because yeah. she wanted my perspective on certain things and I have heard um from multiple people that it is very accurate in a lot of Catholic practices and which mm -hmm. I, and then certain scenes that are yeah. like in, uh, they're just crossing all, a boundary. It is a and dark it's, romance. It's not like a, it's not it's, like a it's really light. Not. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a taboo romance. That's what it is. Oh, it's a taboo. Yeah. And I don't think you should feel pressured into reading it because it is something that you probably don't want to be reading about. And it's like, yeah. for me, it's different because like, I'm not a part of that. Like, it doesn't like, it's not gonna, I'm not, I mean, I go to, I go to a Jesuit uh, university. I've been to church. I've, I, I, I've studied Catholicism. I took theology. I got a, over a hundred percent in that class. Um, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna put that out there that I got an over 100% class and 100% grade in my Christian theology class. So I've studied the religion and stuff. I mean, I'm required to but that's besides the point. Um, but like, if it doesn't like if it's something that you don't want to read about in any book, it you shouldn't be pressured into like, and I think it's common for like, us, us readers, us book talkers, especially to recommend books to other people and to be like, oh, you should read this and kind of go with the trend of like, oh, everybody is reading this right now. And like, yes, it's a dark romance, but like some people just don't want to read that kind of stuff. And I think that is- Yeah. And, and like, you know, she, she uh, after my conversation with her, which was like, uh, like maybe about a month ago, I was just like, mm, maybe I'll give it a try. I was like, mm, maybe, maybe, right? Um, 
And then, because she did explain to me that there was an actual romance that you do get to see. It's not like pure smut. It's, Mm -hmm. you know, it's that. And you see them battling with their own um, storylines. And, you know, that there is some storyline in there and it's not just pure smut. So I was just like, okay, I do like actual romances where it's building Mm -hmm. to, I do. So I was just like, maybe for that, maybe, maybe. And then Ofa from O Loves Books on TikTok, um, love her, absolutely. She has become almost like, like literally, I feel like we are the exact same person. I get that vibe from both of y'all. I literally feel like we're the exact same person. It's insane. Mm -hmm. Um, But like, it's who she put up these books of like um this tiktok with like religious books religious spicy books and she's just like books that i i, I don't remember what the title was but it was just like books I that like I, de- I, 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 don't, I don't know what the title was but it had a lot of these like catholic men and then spice happens and they give up the collar or you know those type of priest type Mm -hmm. of books and priest was in there and then um I commented under that and I was just like girl me with priest I have been battling if I should read it or not Mm -hmm. and she commented right away and she's just like girl don't I'm telling you oh forbidden priest priest rex forbidden priest slash pastor rex for y'all who are about that life yeah and she like she commented all these and and then like she had all these and then like me and her are are dming back and forth on instagram about this and then she's just like girl it was it was so hard for me to read because she is a practicing catholic and it was very hard for her to get through there were a lot of scenes that just like really like what weren't for her did she finish it she pushed through and finished it and like me and her were like talking about how a few other books that I have read have also kind of crossed that that boundary for me but I pushed through like yeah um and there have been a quite a few books that have done that for me and I I think it's healthy I I think that's healthy that you recognize that that's like a boundary where you don't want to cross and you're like I don't want to read that kind of stuff and it's like that's 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 something that I feel like a lot of readers and like people on TikTok need to need to understand is that some people just have boundaries that they don't want cross and that's nothing that you should feel they should be you should be shamed for and anybody else should be mm-hmm. shamed for and it's like it's everybody talks about oh I have preferences when it comes to reading and stuff like I don't want to like some people just don't like spicy smutty books some people like like to read fantasy they don't really like to read like romancy like smutty books or they like to read romance books but they like to read like rom-com books or like other kinds of books versus like spicy smutty like dark romance books it's like yeah it's definitely that boundary yeah and, and it's kind of like realizing that it's just like you know um and like me and her side had, had this like laughing moment where it's just like I told her like look, look girl that this is my th- that's my limit religious spicy books that's my limit like I'm okay yeah. I told her I'm okay with some kidnapping with some Stockholm syndrome you know <laughs> but, mafia but the rest of that people. yeah like, but that's my religion. but religious I'm a, I'm a three with the bit. <laughs> But like that, that's okay. Like I think, like I don't. Think we have some people, hard limits. I think, but yeah. I and I still think it's like it's something that you practice. Like every, like it's you live and breathe and you practice that religion. And so it's like, it, it, like if I was, if I was religious you know. at all, I would feel also a little icky. Where you're just like, this is a little too it's a little much. much. And especially with little. like Catholics and the idea of priests and Jesuits being celibate and like um giving their whole life to god and stuff and then reading a book where somebody does give that up i haven't even read like i don't even know the synopsis of it the synopsis but, you, but, this that, one is, that's, but that's like the probably know. the basis of the story and it's like and i would understand how that goes against like why you sign up to be a priest because like signing up to be a priest and like and like even a jesuit and vowing celibacy is a very big thing and so yeah. it's so- like 
to read about that somebody just like denouncing all of that that probably is very like oh I do not want to read about that and that's perfectly fine yeah and you know from certain scenes that I have read heard about people who have read this the holy oil scene (laughs) I'm sorry Um, I I heard about that scene and I started laughing I was just like no they exactly exactly and no they did not that's literally the difference between you and I it's just like this book perfect for you because you know you were like no and me I'm like "Mm, mm, mm, well like you know yeah and especially but but it's a difference you know and and that's okay it's also our lifestyles are different. I am yeah, not a our religious lifestyles person. Are completely different. Like I, I can understand Catholicism. I've studied it and stuff. And I like, I actually was, fun fact, I was actually going to minor in theology. Like I was fully, like full force. I took, I took theological ethics. I took like theology classes and stuff. I was like prepared to like minor in theology because I, I loved, <laughs> this is going to sound so awkward, but like I love the Catholic religion and understanding Catholicism and stuff and even Christianity and stuff. I love learning the background behind it and analyzing it and mm-hmm. stuff. And it's it's something that I learned going to school and stuff is from the first, like first semester freshman year, after like three weeks, I was like, I want to study Catholicism. And people were like, what? And I'm like, it's very interesting. And like, I, under, I understand a lot because my grandma is heavy Catholic. My, like, I'm Margaret. Like, Margaret is a very Catholic name. Do you know how many Margarets are on my campus? I have a best friend who's named Maggie. Literally, last night, Carly and I, Carly, Maggie, and I were over, and she goes, Maggie, and we went, which one? (laughs) And then, like, in class, like, somebody will call Maggie, and you're like, which one? So, it's just, yeah, I understand, and that's, I understand boundaries, because, like, for me, some boundaries that I don't want to cross are like I'm interested in them but like I don't know if I will cross is like the step brother kind of oh where it, I know you're like full force but I don't know it's just the, the sub incest plot where I'm just like mm. <laughs> but I'm interested <laughs> and I could probably work up to it because I think like I'm working up to books like this I have worked up to books like this, but like right now I'm in my like fluffy romance space. So I think I'll probably read this one first, which I know, Grace, do you want me to read what it says? No, no, (laughs) no, I'm good. I'm good. You know, and that's a thing. Like, um, you know, like we're, we're, we're saying this over and over again, like, you know, people have their preferences and their hard limits on certain things. They can read about incest and not bat an eye. Game of Thrones. There's definitely some underlying issues right there, but you know, th- yeah. that's their thing. That's their yeah. thing. And then we have the other line where they won't cross into religion. We have the other line where they won't cross into um, BDSM. There, we have the, another line where they won't cross into other like monster Creatures. a lot of people don't want to read monster romances and like that's a big thing on tiktok right now and i know and i think i know that's a big trend is like the minotaur i haven't even i read ice planet barbarians but i'm not really interested in reading like monster romances at the moment like am i in am i interested in like under like reading like what is all the hype about yes but am i interested in reading a monster romance right now no i'm not yeah and i just it's it's like a thing and, and it's fine it's fine like there's people who it's a preference will not, you know yeah and you know and but katie robert don't... is coming out with a monster romance she is yeah i know i saw that did, did you see the cover that i sent you i did <laughs> uh the uh cover for electric idol which is the sequel to neon gods has been released and it looks amazing okay um, i loved the mirror one but the the single heart crystal heart yeah, Ten and times it definitely better. fits. It fits the the thing, but yeah, and you know, all in all, if somebody doesn't want, to, I but I feel like with this, it's kind of like I don't know. It's kind of, you know, because, I think, I, and I and I don't know what it is. Um, it's because it's know, a religion that you very, practice. 
that's because it's, it's not so, not from me but I feel oh. like from other people to me you know oh. not you but I do feel like um if I was a little more vocal about like you know my personal life and my religion and people would what I practice and like I feel like people would not understand oh. and I feel like people would um they I would be think- like oh okay I get it but, but they wouldn't get it but they I, wouldn't get it I think I, I do have like- that unique perspective on it where yeah um, you know and and it's kind of like this thing of like now they're going to be looking at me with like a microscope like, and a fine tooth oh, comb yeah I know and exactly. you know and it's kind of like this thing of like people will lump me with something that isn't the way I think like yeah I know exactly what you're saying and I I I think that's what that's why I don't really talk about like my sexuality my religion I don't really talk about a lot of Mm -hmm. that stuff when it comes to the internet just because you're automatically put into a pile of like you're this that this is what your personality is you have to fit into this box under this like I I it's that classic trope of I don't like labels but like that's why I don't like say like my preference like that's why I don't say my sexuality and stuff because it's always especially for like people like Mm -hmm. me it's always like well you should act like this you don't you can't like it's like oh you shouldn't be reading that because it definitely goes against your morals doesn't it and it's like bitch this is fiction (laughs) this is fiction but you can have it's that thing of like you know I'm okay with certain things. I'm okay with certain books. I'm okay with certain types of genres. I have hard limits though. And I feel like a lot of people don't understand that those hard limits and they don't respect them because we're on social media and we have to yeah. be accepting of everybody. We have to be, we have to consume everything. And that's yeah. really not, you consume it's... what you want to. It's, mm-hmm. It's a choice of what you yeah. want, what you take in. Yeah. And I definitely think that like, it's definitely on like your responsibilities, like understand your boundaries and stuff, but it's also like other people's like respect people's boundaries and be like, if somebody says like, no, I'm not really interested. You'd be like, okay, great. Like, that's great to know that you're not interested in that. So like in future references, I'm not going to recommend you books like that. Or like, mm-hmm. I'm not going to talk about books like that because it would make you uncomfortable and I'm not going to tell you about the book and stuff. And so that's why I'm probably, I'm going to read these books, but I'm not really going to post about them. I think I'm going to read them for my own enjoyment and then see how I feel about them and give a big yeah. review on, on, on thingy. But like, I'm just not a very religious person. So I wouldn't put this kind of like books platformed onto my content just because like, I just don't want that kind of content of like mm-hmm. being mm-hmm. religious on my page. Yeah. I like to and, and then other people, uh, other people who do talk about it, who, who do post about it, who love these types of books, power to you because you know, that that's what You're you like. With and it. yeah, yeah, that's you, you know, yeah, it's not me. It's not my cup of tea. Yeah. It's not my, it's not my order at Starbucks, but it's fine. It's fine. Yeah. So <laughs> that moving on um, so that's what you're going to be reading um you have been reading me <laughs> quite a bit this month i, I have this been is the most you've read in a month in two months because july was a big month for me too that's true but like this month you've read a ton like in august alone i've read five four five you've read five and it's only halfway through You're that's right. a lot and it's crazy it's crazy because like after so I started off this month reading the Casanova by T.L. Swan which is the third book in the Miles High Club it is coming out August 28th so we still got a little more time until then um it the Miles High Club series, a lot of people are, there's some people who really like Teal Swan and people who don't like Teal Swan. I I enjoyed her books. It's um, a million dollar CEO romance 
series. I need um, to read those. I need to start manifesting that. <laughs> it's it's a thing, you know. Don't worry. Just log in, log into my Kindle. I, I will. got you. I got the Dude. audiobooks. I got the I got the yeah. Just read them. Just read them. Anyways, if quick I have the audiobooks, on it. I think that will help. Yeah. Quick, quick background on it. So the first book, um, we follow the oldest. So it's four brothers. They are Miles brothers. They that's their last name, mm-hmm. hence the name of the book, uh, the book series. Um, and each book follows a, a, a new a brother. brother. So in the first book we have um, Jameson, and the second book we have Tristan, mm-hmm. and then in the Casanova it will be Elliot. Um, Tristan, if you follow me on TikTok, Tristan is that glorious man who loves stretch marks and caresses C-section scars and the mm, her cellulite. He loves everything about her that makes her her. He understands a he woman likes and BBW is what I'm hearing not so much but he just likes he her, likes her like her body isn't the only thing that makes her attractive mm-hmm. and but her he body appreciates it her body makes her more attractive so mm-hmm. she's already attractive based on these other things this tension this everything Wait, else she has a c-section scar oh. yeah, so the second book is um a widower and oh, okay. tristan okay is that your favorite one it is my favorite one I could tell I could tell it was your favorite (laughs) one because that's the first because I didn't even hear about the first book I'm I'm just no I was trying I was trying to get to it I was I was gonna go back I was gonna go back (laughs) no you weren't no you were you I was you no you were about to spend 20 minutes on this book no I wasn't no list list fine let's go back to the first one the first one is a one night stand okay I love those tropes one night stand year passes oh brought together through some miscellaneous thing some plot point and workplace romance and when i you tell you it's pretty good it does feel like it does frustrate it did frustrate me a, a, a few times because that was just like, come on, dude, like do better. Like you're, uh... Jameson is the CEO. He is the older brother. So he does have like a certain type of wanting things to be in control, wanting things to be a certain way. And Emily is not about that life, you know? Yeah. And she is always unsure about him. And it's that sense of like not miscommunication. We have that, right? And that's kind of the thing, the theme with all these men. They're very, very good looking. They have money. They've been in the spotlight. They don't know women who will actually be by them and actually be like, no, this is not how we're going to do this. If we're going to do this, we are going to do it. There's no one and, to stand up who actually like yeah. pushes against them, which I think is what is needed in a relationship. You need that back and forth. Yeah, you need that back and forth. You need someone to challenge you in the sense of wanting to make you better. And along come these women who end up doing that. So in the first one, we have a workplace romance. And then the second one, we have a widower and rival companies. Um, in, oh, and the, gosh, really quickly on the second second one. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) She has kids. So it's not some, and that's why it was one of my favorites is because he wasn't just wooing her, but he was wooing the children, the kids. Okay. That's so important. That is so important that like, I think that's like, that's why I sometimes like when they've had a baby already, when like a girl has yeah. had a baby or a dad, because it's like, you're not just getting in a relationship with one person. It's like a lot of people, more than Yeah, there's there's a thing. And that that's a re- recurring theme. It's like, you, you're not just winning my heart. There are three hearts attached to mine. And he's just like, I want them all. And I'm just like, 
sir own. sir i only give that title to men who really just burrow deep into my heart and all three of these men so far mm -hmm. have received the sir title so we have sir jameson we have sir tristan and elliot elliot is the younger brother well he's mm -hmm. the second youngest brother i think mm -hmm. and his is a enemies oh rivals to lovers workplace romance but they're in london so they're at the london office so he's the ceo of the london branch while his brothers two other brothers are in new york mm -hmm. and you get the thing about this book is that you get a lot of interaction between the brothers in each of their books. Okay, that's so great. you see them constantly. You see them coming mm -hmm. in. You see them being brothers. You see them being CEO men, being powerful men. But you also see them having heart to hearts with each other. You see them giving each other advice. Um, when they get to Elliot, like Elliot has this whole breakdown, and he's just like, "I need advice. What do I do?" And he talks to the two other brothers who are now married, have families of their own. And he's like, how was it? What do you think? And then we have the last brother who still hasn't has a book yet. And you have those moments of like mm -hmm. men uplifting each other, kind of like the book romance, the, mm -hmm. the yeah. book club. And Where it's like I felt like that experience. was, you know, it's, it's that thing of like, how do you help each other? And I like those types of male relationships where they're, helping each other grow into better men you know mm -hmm. what i mean um so again the last book casanova comes out august 28th if you haven't read the other two books they are on kindle unlimited um they do have the audiobooks on audible plus so if you do have audible plus you will be able to use to listen and read them at the same time very good very fast reads and a lot of it moves very very quickly so if you like that, go ahead and read it. I highly, highly recommend oh, it. Oh, I see all your books on Audible because Grace and I share an Audible account. Yes. Well, I, I, yes. I, I leech off of Grace when it comes to Audible. And so yeah. I'm looking and I'm seeing all the Sophie Lark, T.L. Swan. Yep, yep. That, that, that has been my bread and butter right now. And I have to say these narrators, very, very good. Really? They've been pretty good, yeah. yeah. Even with like the spicy and the dirty talk and the, yes. Is it Anyways, dual narration or is it one? It is, it is okay. dual POV, it's dual narration. I, that's, and that's a big thing for me in romance yeah. books. So for the romance book club, it's not, it's a guy all the way through, but there's dual POVs. So it kind of was just like, uh, like when I would listen to the girls oh, part. It was, um, was it third person? yes I yeah think, let me make sure i'm pretty sure if it was third, third person. person it's it's kind of like um yeah it is get a life chloe brown yeah and but the narrator was a woman yeah because yeah. the story is hers yeah it, it, and it's mostly the stories are from the guy's perspectives is what this book is mm -hmm. which i like i think is interesting um but yeah i'm definitely gonna read some of the books you've been reading yes uh, do so because I, they're they're good i have to i think i'm gonna have to start listening to books with audiobooks because i'm gonna be reading a lot from like a like 10 p.m to midnight and audiobooks are really fast and easy and those keep my attention and stuff um or like when i'm walking to class or something i can listen to my audiobook that's why i think i need to i'm gonna yeah. have to start listening to more audiobooks but like i have like it definitely uh, helps i have because... to shout out to pauline yeah. because pauline i love you girl and you have started my love for christina lauren and i bought this book okay and that's, I have a pet that's what i'm hitting up after i have a pet oh. peeve oh because you see this book you see the cover it's great right we love it so it's the same style as beautiful as secret beautiful and beautiful bastard too right no the beautiful bastard books are a different style if I can grab them, that's the, where are they? I gave some friends actually came over and like shopped, but no, the beautiful bastard is a black and white and it's like the full cover is black and white. And then the color is only the words. 
So like the last book doesn't match the first three book in the series because the black spines, you can see them. They're black spines, but these ones was are like- Was it the first, the first one that you read was red? So only the lettering was red. Here, really? let me grab it. Let me grab it. I'm gonna watch me stand up and grab it. So this is what they look like. So it's just the lettering oh. is the color. And this oh. is like, so it doesn't match up. Match. And so mm. I have a pet peeve with Christina Lauren. Y'all too need to fix this because mm -hmm. the lettering mm -hmm. is correct, but the coloring is not. Is not. Yeah. But I, I actually that. bought a ton of books in my order are from like book talk <laughs> a lot because like yeah i got M melissa melissa did, did um and then i got the arc for the third book so that's stars. also why yeah yeah mm -hmm. i got the arc for the third book and i was like well now i actually have to now buy have the to first and second <laughs> yeah that's actually how I kind of started on this train of like the books that I was reading is because mm -hmm. of the book talk, because like the takeover, the stopover is the first one in the Miles High Club. Mm -hmm. And I saw that one on TikTok, saw like one trope or like one line from it. I don't remember what it was, but I immediately added it to my TBR and on my Goodreads and then decided, okay, I just finished, um, I forgot what I finished right before the takeover. I think I finished some maybe the maid series I don't remember what I read before but something and then I jumped into the Miles High Club because of book talk and now I'm reading Sophie Lark's um Mafia series which is the uh, brutal birthright series which and is the prequel the series. first yeah so it's the first generation to her Kingmaker series. And if you well, follow Sophie Lark on, on TikTok, the series that she has been promoting lately is the Kingmakers with the neon font. I didn't know that. So I'm so glad yeah. you told me that because I was going to read the Kingmaker series and I was just going to read that. And then you're like, oh yeah, it's like the first generation. I was like, yes, yes. I would have not so, known like, that. So, so this is, this is how it, I find out as well, because I was like, okay, I'm finally, get, I've been following Sophie Lark for a while. I've been like looking at her, you know, her like aesthetic videos and I've been seeing things about it. First of all, her and her husband love them. They are a team. He works on the covers and she writes the books and I love that. Um, and I've been seeing so much about the Kingmakers and I was just like, you know what? It's a mafia book and I need another dose of mafia men. I oh, went to CEOs. Me. She was yeah. following me on TikTok. Yeah. I didn't realize she was following. I, I literally just followed her back. I did not realize she was following yeah. me. And so um, I was like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to read that. Especially because I asked Ofa for more mafia books because, you know, she and I are the same person. So we both love mafia books I am stealing her catchphrase that she shared with me that mafia romances are her love language and I'm thinking that they are mine as well so where did she get that I was from? gonna we start need to make that a sticker she just we were just talking and it just came out that way and I was just like you know what that, that could that's be a gonna, that's gonna be our do. thing that's that gonna could be, be a our sticker thing. collection like oh office definitely. romance are my love language I'm gonna talk to her about that so that we can we'll send her a we, whole bunch of stickers we'll yeah um so i was about to start um the air which is the first book in the kingmaker series mm -hmm. um and then literally i have it downloaded in my kindle and then i'm going through instagram through instagram stories and i go through sophie's stories and she reposted someone's poll of the Kingmakers and the Brutal Birthright series. And then it was like, which is better, fathers versus sons? And I'm like, fathers versus sons? Oh, so you didn't know either. I didn't know. And so I saw that and then I messaged Opa about it. And Opa was just like, yeah, it is. And I look and I'm just like, it's a whole, fr because like literally when I turned to the first page of mm -hmm. um, the air in the Kindle, it has a family tree. And I'm like, oh, that's weird. But well, it makes sense because, you know, it's a mafia romance. So maybe there's, we need to know. Yeah. But then I'm like, oh, that's weird. 
But then I saw some of the names and I look over at the brutal birthright and I'm just like, hold up, that's them. I didn't look at the girls. I only looked at the male names. So I didn't know who they ended up with. I, I, I kept myself very in check when yeah. I was looking looking at it so then I immediately ran over got the brutal birth the brutal prince which okay. is the first book in the brutal birthright series mm -hmm. and it follows uh Callum Griffin who is the heir to the Irish mafia in Chicago and that name um that Callum name Griffin. Callum, that Callum is name. Callum is something you, okay? for these? you said <laughs> I, I do have the audiobook for the first one and we'll those <laughs> I'm telling you, I finished it in a, in less than 12 hours. Okay. So we have Callum, um, who is, you know, our first guy, uh, mm. who's the Irish mafia heir. And we have Ada Gallo, who is the youngest daughter of the Don of the Italian mafia, also in Chicago. So we got two rival mafias. This is like actual enemies to lovers. Like this, this is, is enemies actual to enemies level. to lovers. And something happens that they're about, both families are about to hit an all time, an all at war because of something that happened. They did something, they did something. And to stop this war, the two fathers meet is it arranged and marriage? Strike up. Okay, I, I am reading this tonight. I am reading this tonight. <laughs> oh, this. and these two, the, Gata, uh, Gata. You know what? That's what we're going <laughs> to Callum and uh, Ada are like very, they hate each other and they're both very stubborn. She's he didn't even know about her didn't, didn't know that they had a daughter he was just kind of like oh we hate them they hate us kind of thing mm -hmm. he is trying they're like above ground mafia so they have a lot of like businesses they're not so much in the dirt anymore they're very um, they're so mafia who have have become legitimate legitimate that's the word i was looking for so legitimate. yeah and the gallows are kind of like that in between they mm -hmm. still do some, you know, some nitty but, and so, so ca the Irish look down on the Italians, like, oh, you guys are barbarians. You guys always break fingers and chop off. And then they're just like, oh, you're too prissy for me and blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. So it's very funny. He's running for a political office. And so she has to be like, you know, this type of wife. And clearly she is not. And we got that possessive. We got that there's an ex-boyfriend who comes up. It's Whoa. a whole thing. So I need it's a whole now. thing. You need to read this now. Okay. The second so book, I need to look the second book handled. is following that storyline. You have to read them in order. Following that storyline, based on the events that happened in the book one, book two, the Polish mafia becomes more prominent and they're really in the, the deep. Mm -hmm. Then there is a, the second book is a Beauty and the Beast retelling. So we have a kidnapping. Oh. And we have a um, budding romance there. Then the third one is Ada's second oldest brother, who is very into cars and always getting things done. And that one feels like Fast and Furious mm -hmm. meets, um, bank heist and yes each book has its own vibe but they literally follow each other on events it's like a chain of re reactions that starts in the first book that filters the the preceding books so right now i am reading the fourth book in the series which is on ada's oldest brother so it is following dante who is the heir to the Italian mafia. Oh, wow. You have to read them in order too. It's not like, oh, will, you know, it's a standalone. I will read them in order. It's a, no, I'm, really? not saying, I'm not saying it's so much for you, but it's just for everybody else. It is one of those things where like, you have to know what's happening in order to understand why things are the way they are. And then the, the next book is Ada's 
youngest brother who is older than her. Mm -hmm. So each of her brothers gets a, a book. Callum and his sister gets a book and his other sister is also going to get a book. How many books is this series? It's one, two, three, four, six. And I've read each of them so far in less than 12 hours each. So for me, it's like going to be like four hours. <laughs> maybe, maybe, yeah. How and the ways? spice is not too heavy spice. And it's, it's really a plot driven spicy romance. Mm -hmm. Like I'm invested in the plot. Yeah. You're really like I feel like this show, I feel like this show could be a TV series following okay, so it's the, like, brutal the Chicago Prince. mafias. Yeah. Okay. I'm downloading it now to my Kindle. Also, you can well. download now 20 books on Kindle Unlimited now. Yes, you can. That's like the most amazing news ever. Because like before I had to like figure out which books I wanted to return back to Kindle. It was like, yeah. oh, I don't want to let you go, but you know, I have to. But the good thing is on Kindle Unlimited is like, no matter what book you read um, and you highlight and add your notes, if you return it, once you check it out again, all of your notes and your highlights are still there. Yeah. That's what I do like about it. Um, but I have this thing now where every book that I read on Kindle Unlimited that I love I want in person. Yeah. I want a physical copy. This whole mm -hmm. series, I'm going to want a physical copy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yep. That, so that was our reading updates. Uh, any <laughs> yeah. life updates? Life updates. I am still looking for a job. I am still looking for a job. Uh, that's why I have been reading so fast because I have nothing to do besides scouring Indeed. And, and she reading. still, though, she still made our new podcast logo. That's true. So everybody who has been loving our podcast logo, that is all thanks to Grace. I think I remember texting you in the morning. I was like, yeah, we need to get our pod new podcast logo. And you're like, ugh, okay, I'll work on that. <laughs> and you like texted like, me. Oh, damn it. Yeah. And then you like texted me later that day and you sent it while I was sleeping. And so like I woke up in the morning and I'm like, I was like, whoa, this shit looks yeah. good. So I love it. I finished it. I finished it when I was eating dinner and then I just kind of left it there. And then I was like, oh wait, I got to send this send. But it was like already like midnight for you. I really do like how it came out. Um, somebody commented on our Instagram that um, the headphones were very um, in tune with like her listening to audiobooks, And I literally told her that was one of my inspirations for it, for listening and for audiobooks, because you guys know I'm a big audiobook listener. I love audiobooks yeah. so much. So it was a big uh, inspiration for me. And yeah. Maggie was like a big help on like what elements we needed in it. Yeah. Well, because when we designed, fun fact, when we designed this, we were on a Zoom call. We like our meetings and stuff. We were on a Zoom and we like made the layout in like Canva or something. And you're like, okay, I just screenshotted you the layout and you made it. And then you did like your own thing on it. But it looked really good. It turned out really great. I am very happy with how he came out. Um, we'll, we'll see what happens. I My plan is to hopefully save enough money to make that logo into an actual neon sign. Yeah, I want that as a neon here. sign. Yeah, I think it'll be really, really cool. Um, that's that. Uh, what else? Um, so kind of to wrap this up, thank you um to everybody who listened today to our just our updates um next week we have kayla who is from k underscore let's underscore reads uh read um so we're going to be talking a little bit about the romance community and especially the sensory sense sense sen, sensory sen, book talk romance uh censorship of romance on book talk at the moment um yeah. we're gonna be talking about that she has a lot to say on it i join yes. her lives frequently her rants frequently yeah. and it's pretty great so she is gonna be our guest for next week stay tuned okay i'm just gonna i'm just gonna put this out there stay tuned for october because our plans for october y'all when i tell you 
the first guest in October. I am still like so excited for that. I'm literally going to cry right now. Like I told somebody who the guest was. I told a coworker and she looked at me and she's like, no way. And I'm like, yes. And she's like, oh my God. And I'm like, yeah. And we're like, we're like in romance. Like we're like, because that's where I tell like all my tea and stuff is in the romance section at Barnes Noble. And so I was like, okay, I have to tell you this. And we like ran over to romance and like we're talking. So I was like, yeah. And we we're like whispering. She's like, oh my God. I'm like, yeah, I know. And we're just like, oh my God. So I'm really excited for all of our plans for October. Um, any updates, Grace? Um, a little info on the October. Um, we will be announcing um, our guests lineup and um, schedule lineup for October around mid to end of September. We will also be releasing a um, October launch in our shop which will be a couple of stickers and maybe a couple items. Yeah, um, we haven't for launched this, down. Yeah, yeah. for the event. It's, it's an event. It's a month long event that we're gonna have going on and I'm really excited for what we're doing. And we will have stickers. Um, we're gonna have a sticker and then like a sticker pack. So you can get like either certain stickers for each each episode in the month, or you can get a full sticker pack with all the stickers from all the episodes. So yeah, that's it'll be, be a, a very good lineup. We'll try to keep everyone updated as we get enough information together for you guys. Yeah. We do really want you guys to be pumped up for it and to kind of participate in every way that you guys are able to um, with the books that we're going to be talking about and uh, the people that we will have on. So that way you guys can, don't have to be like, oh, wait, I have to listen to this episode yeah. later on when I finally do read this book. Yeah. Um, but yeah, or that's what we're doing better with that. Okay. Yeah. Most of the time we decide that week what we're doing. Yeah. <laughs> but this one we're planning ahead. Was, especially for this episode, we were like, I was like, Grace, what are we going to talk about? And she was like, reading updates and I was like dude that's exactly what I was gonna say and it was funny because we both said it at the exact same time and then our responses were said at the exact same time the exact same thing and we were just like we're on the same wavelength and we both the said whole, that at the same time literally the whole conversation was like both of us texting what are we what's what are we talking about this week oh my gosh we both literally asked at the same time then it's just like reading, reading updates, updates and both of us the same message and then both of us like, oh, we're on the but we're both on the same wavelength. And we're like, <laughs> we're it's, done. It's there. It's it's it's, it's the yeah. thing. Mike <laughs> drop right there. That's what it was. Um, but yes, we were we are going to try to be better at our updates with you guys. Um we are gonna be updating our um TikTok a little bit more. I have been lagging on that i am sorry grace has um, the time now to talk and... i have the time now so mm -hmm. i'm able to do it um we are almost at we are 700 followers on tiktok which is pretty great in the time that we've created it and the least amount of content that we have done on it um also i did really quickly i did make uh, a backup tiktok for my account because i do feel like i am going to be you banned did? i don't even know how i knew account. that i didn't even know that <laughs> i made it like on a whim and i decided let me just put it here it is read.w.grace it is the same user as my instagram i feel like i might as well put it make another one now because i feel like if i get banned a couple more times it's over for Grace Reads, which is sad to see it go, but I am preparing for the worst. So if you guys want to go ahead and follow me there, I don't have any videos posted yet. I'm going to try and I'm save as many. <laughs> I'm, going, I'm the OG I'm going... follower on this account. So if anybody is like, oh, I've been following you the longest. No, I have been following Grace the longest. If uh, you guys um want to go ahead and follow me there please do so it's it's it, I, at the moment it's going to be a lot of recycled content just to get something up there but we'll see with that um, um update to my tiktok i will be not posting as much i know during the summer i was posting daily it will probably start being every other day just because i do have school 
Um, so it is a little harder for me to read and then post content as well. And also, I don't think anybody else has noticed a lot of, I think not everybody has noticed, but I definitely am not posting a lot of smutty content videos. I'm doing a lot more bookish lifestyle videos at the moment. And I think now that school's starting back up, I'll have, I'm going to start posting again my smutty content, but it is going to be more censored because of um, community guidelines and stuff. I... I'm building my platform and I don't want to get banned is what basically I'm saying. <laughs> and so, me, I'm just like, let's see how far we can push this. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, Grace is definitely <laughs> going farther than I am. Um, so thank you everybody for listening. Um, this definitely was not as short as we planned it to be. <laughs> It was not. It's over we got, an hour. We, but we, we, we hit some heavy topics. Yes, we did. We did. We did. We did. Yeah. Um, that's usually the case with us. But yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, shout out to Calvin, our main hype person. Hey, Calvin. We love Calvin. We love if Calvin. you're still listening, um, text us a, a book emoji or a book meme. That's how yeah. I'll know if Calvin actually listened is if he sent us a book meme. Yes. Send it to the group chat, Calvin. That's how we will know. <laughs> um, but yeah, everybody, yeah, okay. hope you guys have a great rest of your, your day. Yeah. Let us know what you're reading on our Instagram stories. We'll make sure to put a poll up just to let us know what your reading updates are. And yeah. Yeah, we'll see you in the next one. Have a good rest of your evening. Bye. Bye, guys. <laughs>